If you're going to be my apprentice, you must listen, boy. Xavier shouted at me, his long gray hair and beard whipped around his reddened face. His arms waved wildly as he spoke, holding his long wooden staff threateningly. A double-double contains the vital cream and sugar that a man needs for survival. You order a coffee regular, and who knows what the hell you're going to get. The sorcerer were much stranger than I had imagined, it turned out. But then again, I wouldn't have imagined they existed in the first place. Sorry about that, sir. That won't happen again. See that it doesn't, young man. He sat down on a short wooden stool, which was positioned next to a table covered in a messy stack of papers. Xavier sipped at his hot coffee in its paper cup, grimacing at the taste. This is really terrible, you know. Just awful. We were in his workshop, located in the garage of his house, an old beat-up two-story building on the east side of town, in the shadier section of town, I might add. Ladies of the night could be seen roaming the streets, only a few blocks away, even in broad daylight. And most of the buildings were shuttered and empty. I rode my bike over there after school for the first day on the job, working as the sorcerer's new apprentice. The day prior, I had helped him save the universe. He kind of owed me one. So he agreed to pay me minimum wage, under the table, in magical golden coins. So much to learn, and we have so little time. Should have picked a new apprentice years ago. Now I'm stuck with... He looked up and seemed to have forgotten I was standing there. What's your name again? Oh, I forgot it. No time for pleasantries. Let's begin. No time like the present. The old wizard in brown and green robes stood to his feet and looked me up and down. What did I teach you yesterday? Refresh my memory, will ya? I'm a thousand and eight years old, after all. And they say, when you hit a thousand, that's when your memory really starts to go. <laughs> he pointed at his temple and made the sound of a squeegee trying to get stain off of windshield. Um, finger guns? Remember? I could see by his face that he did not. Right! Taught your finger guns. The old lightning spell, as cliche as they come, but reliable in a pinch. Good. Now what's next? You're... Asking me? Oh, good point. I'm the mentor. That means I have to teach you a few things before you can be trusted on your own. Hence, the bungled coffee order. Very well. What else? What else? I felt like it was important to me, to be honest with him. Something... Something was bothering me. Um, before we get started, I have a confession to make. Well, not so much a confession, but... Something that happened and that that you should know about? I realized I was rambling and I stopped, looking at his perplexed face. You know the girl from yesterday at, at the tree? The one who sp stole your key? Baruka, he murmured hatefully. Right, yeah, well, see, before we met, she stole the key from me. She distracted me by kissing me and- Oh no, not the berry lip gloss. Yeah, how'd you know? I was once your age. I know how it is. Her mother pulled the same trick on me once. But that girl's not your age. She's at least a hundred, maybe more. I've been dealing with her for a long time now. I can't trust her. I was confused. But he seemed to notice that and explained. When you become a fully-fledged sorcerer or sorceress, you get age-extending benefits from the enhancement process. You get to decide if you want to use your powers for good or for evil. She chose evil. So she's somebody's apprentice? Yes, once, a long time ago. She was the youngest apprentice we'd ever seen in the guild, so great was her potential. He looked to be far off and thought for a moment, then came back to reality again. She looks like she's about my age. Mm, you're right. Maybe you've got some potential after all. There's only one way to get rid of that sort of black magic. We need to get one of her hairs plucked straight from the top of her head. He pulled out one of my hairs to demonstrate. Ow! We gather a few other easy-to-obtain ingredients and... Bada-boom! We perform the ritual and break the spell. What a relief, I thought to myself. No more late-night visits from the girl who pretends to be like me. 
who was really just trying to get to a sorcerer and take his key. I knew better than that. I couldn't be fooled. Later that night, I was fooled. She came to see me in my darkened bedroom once again. It was 3 a.m. this time, and I had just woken up from a deep sleep to find her laying in bed next to me. My mom would be so pissed. I mean, I was still in high school, just to be clear. And this was an older woman in my bed with me. A, a much, much older woman. The intoxicating sweet and sour smell of her invaded my nostrils once again, and I breathed her in. She smelled like fresh-picked berries mixed with corpse flesh. Immediately, I forgot about the fact that I was supposed to hate her. I had butterflies in my stomach as I gazed into her glowing purple eyes, and I felt my hand reaching up to stroke her hair in the darkness. We kissed again, and after pulling away from her, I swallowed a lump hard in my throat before speaking. Hi. Hi, she said back. So what did Xavier say about me? That I'm evil or something, probably? I was only a bit surprised to find myself answering her, giving away any secrets she asked for. Yeah, pretty much. Are you? Oh, definitely. You are? Mm-hmm. She kissed me again, and I felt my entire body breaking out in tingling prickles. Well, then, I don't feel so bad about this, then. Gotcha, Baruka! Xavier had appeared behind her in the darkness a few moments before, and now was standing just behind her, holding one of her hairs triumphantly in his grip. She spun around and snatched at it, jumping in the air, trying to grab it from the taller man when he held it high above his head like a... like a bully playing keep away. Give it back! Uh-uh, Baruka, greedy. Greedy never gets. Don't you know your manners yet? You're a hundred years old. You should know your manners by now. You're such a dick. Just give it to me. I hate you, Dad. My eyes widened. Was she, was she, well, hey, was she being serious? Wait, you're his daughter? Duh. Didn't he tell you that? Stop it, Dad. I really like him. Quick speaking like that to my apprentice. You're distracting him from his studies. You have no right. And you have no right to that key either. It's not your birthright. It's going to whoever I see fit, and that's him. She suddenly looked furious. Him? You're going to give it to him? He nodded. She huffed, then snapped her fingers and disappeared. As did the sorcerer a few moments later. My parents came in just after that, rubbing their bleary eyes. Who are you talking to? It's three o'clock in the morning. Oh, uh, uh, nobody. Nobody? Sorry I woke you up. It's just a bad dream. Oh, okay. Good night, kiddo, my dad said, shooting me the finger guns like he sometimes did. I winked back and almost gave him the same finger gun back. I stopped myself for the last second. What a disaster that would have been. This whole sorcerer business, it's been, it's going to take some getting used to. And I was going to need to be a quick learner by the looks of things. I only hoped I could learn fast enough to take over the position as guardian of the all-world tree before Xavier really lost his marbles. And that thought brought a new fear into my heart. What if Xavier was no longer able to fulfill his duties? Would I suddenly be responsible for keeping the universe intact? My heart beat with a dull thud in my temples and in my ears. The sound getting faster and faster. I wasn't ready for this. What's the point of all this anyway? Just to guard some stupid tree, and if and if it's so damn powerful, then why can't it protect itself? The all-world tree stood imposingly behind Xavier, tall and reaching impossibly high into the sky. Looking up, I tried to see the top of it, but I could not. The all-world tree is not simply a tree, boy. Have you not come to realize this by now? We had been training for nearly two weeks. He had definitely mentioned that. It just slipped my mind. A lot of things were slipping my mind lately. Things like math and English homework, studying for tests, getting good grades at school, would fall into the bottom of the list. And up to, at the top of my mind, was a girl with purple eyes and a mischievous smile. Somewhere beneath that were training to be a new guardian, the all-powerful sorcerer, 
charged with defending this corner of the multiverse. What's the matter with you? Are you even listening to me? He shouted at me, suddenly furious. I realized I'd been standing there not saying anything for a while. Oh, sorry, I was lost in my, my thoughts, I guess. He huffed and turned towards the tree, his face now bright red with anger. With a quick tap of his staff, the bark began to split open like a zipper fly being undone. It even made a loud zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
well, sure, she's evil. And yeah, she wants to kill us all, because she wants to cause the end of everything, but you get it. I can tell. It's the intangible things, you know? The, 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 the little things, like how she's always got an extra stick of gum in her pocket for me, and how she... But mostly how she, how she makes out with me when her dad's asleep. I sighed, thinking maybe for the first time that Xavier was right. She was evil. She was always trying to get me to steal the key that he wore on a chain around his neck, but I refused to do that. I knew how important it was, and still, she pestered me about it nonstop, and eventually, eventually I'd probably relent, no matter how much I didn't want to. Kitten had fall asleep in my arms, and he was warm and content there, so I didn't wake it up. I just kept stroking its head softly and thinking about what the hell I was going to do. I had to break up with Bruca. I realized. I mean, she was she was no good. Literally, she had zero goodness in her after a deal she had made with a demon from a dark dimension several decades prior. With that thought suddenly unshakable in my mind, the doorway before me opened and I stepped through right into Bruca's bedroom. She was lying on the bed watching Sabrina the Teenage Witch on her phone. Dun dun. The Netflix deep bass opening sound effect greeted me ominously. Oh. Hey. I said. Hi. She said, putting down her phone and raising her index finger and curling it inwards, bidding me to come closer to her. Let me guess. Did my dad leave you in that abyss dimension with all the floating cats? I realized I was still holding the little guy. Oh, shit. Should I chuck him back in? I mean, do you think this will cause like an interdimensional rift or, or something? I'm sure it's probably fine. Just put him with the others. I set the cat down and it joined a half dozen or so others. So there's there's something I needed to talk to you about, I began to say when Xavier barged into the room and grabbed me roughly by the arm. What the hell, Dad? Get out of my room! He was just about to tell me something important! He's dumping you, dear, the old sorcerer said, pulling me out through the door that he had just come in through. The scenery on the other side did not look like the inside of the house we were in. Instead, it resembled a desert somewhere. What? Hey, he is not. Sorry, I, I wanted to tell you in a nicer way than that. Again, uh, God, I, I'm, I'm really sorry, I said before the door slammed. We were suddenly in a sand dune with the sun beating down on us from above. You know, that was, that was a really dick move, you know? She's your daughter and you talk to her like that? He scoffed and turned around looking into the distance, desert surrounding us on all sides for as far as the eye could see. She'd take your life in a second if she thought that it would get her one step closer to her goal. Don't forget that. She's your enemy now. Your most bitter rival. Don't let her get close to you again. But, I mean, uh, but she's your daughter. You two live in the same house together. What, what if I see her in the kitchen when I'm getting a glass of, of, of water or something? Good point. Bring a bottle with you from home. Now let's get down to business. I've shown you a couple basic spells. One basic spell. F finger guns. I demonstrated sending two bolts of lightning into the distance where they fizzled out amongst the other set of sand dunes a couple miles away. Probably making two tiny coasters made of glass that some camel would trip over at some point down the line. Careful with those. You can kill a camel. Okay. So I showed you one spell. And now is the important part. I'm going to show you how spells work. This is the most complicated part of becoming a sorcerer. It takes a lifetime to master it, and you never stop learning, so pay attention. I pricked up my ears and actually listened to the old guy for the first time in a while. He looked like he wanted to show me something. His staff was gripped tightly in his hand, and his brown robes blew in the sandy breeze as he began to speak with an authority and intellect that I had not known him capable of. When you cast your finger gun lightning bolts, do you know where the lightning is coming from? No. No, I, I've wondered that, though. It is true. I had thought about it. It always felt like I was channeling a power which was coming from another place, like... Like, I was a, a conduit for it, not the one creating it. I said that to Xavier, and he nodded. Very astute, boy. Yes, this is exactly right. We are not the ones who create the lightning bolts or the fireballs. 
We simply open a channel to another world which contains those things. But then, how can I cast a lightning bolt spell? I don't know how to open up a doorway to another to another world. I, I wouldn't even know how to find a dimension full of constant lightning, let alone how to use it. Once you become experienced enough to open a certain conduit, you could do it very easily. The lightning spell was one of the first I ever learned. It became so innate that I learned how to summon it with simply a gesture, like a cantrip. A can what? Never mind. Nobody plays Dungeons and Dragons anymore, sadly, really. I pass that talent on to you through another spell. But that one is a bit more complicated. Wait, what do you mean, passed it on to me? You are to be my heir. As you gain more power, I will lose my own. This is my gift and my curse, as it will be yours when you train your replacement one day. So you, you can't cast the finger gun lightning bolt anymore, even though that was your favorite spell? He shook his head, looking slightly remorseful. I suddenly felt bad for my lack of gratitude, and sure, I, I was being trained to do a thankless job that would have me working for the hundreds of years for zero pay. But Xavier had already done that job himself for a long time was now being stripped of his powers and responsibilities one by one. Overcome by emotions, I gave the old man a hug. His old bones creaked and he whined and complained until I stopped. Thank you, Xavier, for all you've done. His eyes were wet with tears, as were my own. First Damn thank you I've gotten in a thousand years, he managed. I appreciate it. Now on to your lesson. Another thought suddenly occurred to me. Wait, what about your daughter's magical abilities? Do you mean that she got those from you? He looked at me sheepishly, but didn't say anything. And you said that you had, what, five different apprentices before me? Again, he said nothing, but his face went a little red. How many powers have you given away? Do you have any left? I've got plenty of power left in me. There's an infinite number of spells out there, depending on which part of the multiverse you're pulling them from. I just need to get... to get... creative after a while. Wait, so what, what the hell am I supposed to do now? I can't learn some kind of magic now because you gave all your abilities away? Well, not exactly. You can get them back. You would just need to defeat my former apprentices in battle. You beat them, you get their powers. It's sort of a Highlander situation in that regard. Sans the decapitation. But ugh, this just gets better and better, doesn't it? He smiled at me. He did not comprehend sarcasm. Maybe, maybe that was one of the abilities he gave away. I thought to myself bitterly. This was going to be a very long apprenticeship. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepasta. And I wanted to tell you thank you for watching today's video on YouTube or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast. If you guys are interested, because we're moving into spring right now, that means that the uh, allergy seasons are going to be hitting us. And I don't know if you guys can hear it very well, but it hits me pretty hard to get yourself past a couple of those allergies, aller, aller, allergy, allergies. My wife sells tea. I don't know if that's connected, but hey, it's it's a segue and my wife sells tea. Check out Etsy.com slash Ivory Monocle Tea to be able to check out some of the tea that my wife makes. And you can even get a special sticker if you order the Mr. Cree Pasta Tea and you ask for it. It's a, it's a sticker of me doing a, doing a dab. It's one of my Twitch emotes. And I want to give a big thank you, as always, to all of my Patreon subscribers on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs. You are the ones that allow me to do stuff, like getting specific stories just for the channel. If you guys want to see more of that, then I would really, really, really love if you guys could help support on Patreon.com slash Pasta, like some of these wonderful guys, such as Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Chaos Arts, Cryolinian, 
Milk and Meal, Silty K. Sterlerson, Zachary Graphius. It's all about that fucking music. Gorang Trimegacy, Maria Walker, Tanya Oren, Pain Gravy, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Ika Limchok, Dirt Diver 030, Matt Bach, Dabbles Raz, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Matthew McNeese, Chelly J, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Ficomel, Nana, Nick Weaver, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, Sky Mara Ravenswood, William King, Darth Milver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Nessie, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Billy Morrow, Sashi Suzaku, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Freddy Krueger, Nicholas Zaccardi, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Raphael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. You guys, as well as everybody if you look down in the description, and everybody that can even just give one dollar to be able to help things out, I really appreciate it. If you guys would like to join this list of names that I horribly, horribly mispronounce, Check out patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, and honestly, even you guys who just listen, you watch, you comment, you like, you subscribe, thank you all. I really appreciate it, and sweet dreams.